Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2. In this particular video, we are watching a game between Snoot and Hero, two extremely high-level professional gamers that play this game full-time. If you watch the professional games at all, you will have undoubtedly heard of these dudes because they have been around since forever. Like, well, not, not quite since forever, but a very long time, multiple years on both ends. A lot of experience and the reason why we're watching this game is because I want to answer one simple question that is, how do you counter the Adept Phoenix style? that is super popular right now on the ladder. I play on the European ladder myself. I've been losing a lot to the Adept Phoenix style myself. Um, I tend to go for a lot of like quick lurker play to try and counter it, and it doesn't really work. I never really quite have enough units. And what exactly do I mean, by the way, with the Phoenix Adept style? Basically, what Protosses tend to go for right now a lot is a style where they open up with Oracle first off, maybe some Adept Arras in the early part of the game, but they, they open up with a uh, Phoenix, or like with an Oracle Arras first off, then they switch into Phoenixes and then do a route six or seven or eight gateway Aras with Adepts while transitioning towards a third base. And normally, what Zerg players used to do in the past is like, as soon as you saw Stargate play, right? Right, it's Stargate units, let's just drone up three bases because there's nothing they can really do as long as I can counter those Stargate units, right? Um, Stalkers were a little bit too expensive. Zealots were a little bit too weak to actually do any kind of Aras. But Adepts are mobile enough to be able to still do aggression while still tacking up to that third base and, you know, getting like, um, you know, robotic facility units out as well. So basically there is a mid game style right now that's very popular where they focus on adapts as well as phoenixes and I have been struggling against that quite a lot. Now Snoot you know, spoiler alert, does end up losing this game. He does end up losing this game. It was played a couple of weeks ago um, at an IEM tournament, uh, but I felt like it was a very good example on how you can go ahead and play against the style. Um, and I've been looking through it a couple times myself right now, and I actually think it's pretty ingenious what he's uh, what he's been doing right now. So while he does end up losing the game, he establishes a really big um, lead towards the late game. And while there is some unfortunate um, decision making right there, where he basically just loses part of the army, I don't even know if we're gonna watch all of that we probably will but um i want to primarily figure out when he decides to start making units when he decides to start making drones when he puts down the roach warren and when he decides to add on static defense also i want to figure out how many zerklings he decides to make early on before aggressively droning up because those are all questions that i personally have been having and the end result should hopefully um you know after this video hopefully you will be able to play a little bit more safely against uh against protos as well so in this particular game we saw a hatchery first into a gas geyser into a spawning pool he got the zerking speed going pulled the drones out of the gas and used those additional minerals to get the third base out a little bit faster now we do see, uh, see some adept play here in the early part of the game. And Snoot, as you may have already expected, is going to add on a couple more Zerklings. In total, he adds on about... Um 10 Zerklings, I believe, in total. Two are going to end up falling here. That is all good. The reason why you want to go for eight is because you can quite easily surround multiple Adepts. So if there's two Adepts, you can actually counter those with relative ease. Now, at this point, after making the eight Zerklings, Zerkling speed is about to finish up, and he's going to go ahead and start droning up aggressively, which is usually what I would recommend pretty much everything, everyone to do. Now, the third base is already going up. There's still, um, you know, not really any kind of additional gas production, but here's an interesting moment, all right? So here's the first interesting moment. At three minutes and 30 seconds, Snoot decides to add on one spore crawler in the main, as well as one spore crawler in the natural. Or here we go. Where is it? It's gonna go down. I know it's gonna go down. I already checked this replay. There we go. A little bit later. What exactly triggers him to do that? Because if you go back just a tad, you will notice that he didn't really see anything at this point in time, right? He didn't really see anything whatsoever. I mean, he puts down the first board crawler um, right about right now. I mean, look at his vision. He hasn't even seen the natural yet of his opponent, right? He just knows that there is going to be a Protoss base over here. But he's only seen one Adept. So there's a couple of reasons why this would be the case. Uh, first off, if there's like heavy, heavy, like cheesy, cheesy Oracle play going on, it would come out roughly around four-ish minutes on uh, his side of the map. So that means a four-minute sport crawler would be a little too late. Also, he was actually a couple games behind at this point in the tournament. So he's probably just playing hyper, hyper safe. And obviously, additionally, there is also going to be a lot of like uh, pressure on his shoulders right now to perform and he knows his opponent he knows the tendency of hero uh, where he likes to play you know this stargate into adept kind of style um, so you know he's just gonna simply play very very safe so first things uh, to note i suppose if you want to play a hyper safe situational style make sure to add on the spore crawlers at the three minute and 30 second mark or at very latest i would recommend getting them at four minutes now 
He is gonna do some harass here, and this harass isn't just to try and pick off workers. He isn't just trying to figure out what's going on there. He's also checking out the buildings that are up, the units that are currently available for his opponent, but most importantly, he's checking out the gases. So seeing a lot of gas at this point in time would mean, hey, you know, the Protoss player is likely gonna tech up, but more importantly, if you would see the double gas right now at this point in time, it would mean that there will not be enough mineral income for the Protoss player to support a Phoenix into adapt style. So that is like also something he's checking out right now. Because there is a lack of gas in the natural, he knows that there is a big potential for this aggression to come in, so he's gonna already start preparing for this right at this moment in time. Now, Snoot will know roughly around the timing where this will hit, so he doesn't need to rush it out, but he is aware of this right now. So, he is going to try his very best to pick off a couple of units, and here's an interesting moment as well. He adds on 10 more Zerklings. And this is something that I initially was a little bit confused about. I mean, normally, I mean, what exactly does the Protoss has right now, right? He's got three adapts in total. Two of those are being used defensively, just in case. He doesn't even have a Mothership Core yet. He's, he's skipping that out altogether just to try and be super, like, super, super greedy on this uh, on this starboard. Um, why exactly does he add on those 10 Zerklings? And I think this is just, like, sort of a default response uh, whenever he sees additional gateways go down. The fact of the matter is that even if there's three gateways out, you can still warp in a whole bunch of adepts, right? Like three rounds, you're gonna get nine adepts out, and there's already a couple out, so that's gonna be up about 10 or 12 adepts in total at that point. If you have no defenses ready to go at that moment, you're gonna be in a dire scenario. Also, what I think Snoot likes having in general, it seems to be the case in most of his games, is at least 16 Zerklings. He wants to just simply have 16 Zerklings to roam across the map. Also, one important reason why he may add on those 16 Zerklings here no matter what is because of the third base timing. Oftentimes, if you see the gases being skipped out, right, it could obviously mean that there's going to be some sort of gateway aggression because he's saving up extra minerals, but there's also a chance that there is going to be um, a third base much greedier and without a Mothership Core, there's no way you can really hold on to it. Um, so, you know, he's just simply trying to prepare for that in advance. So, so far, we've got that if you want to play super safe, make sure to pull the drones out of the gas as soon as the, um, you know, Zerking speed is started up. Add on the third base whenever you can, whenever you have the minerals for it, relatively early on into the game. Then add on the spore crawlers at 3 minutes and 30 seconds, and make sure you have at least 16 Zerklings running across the map, roughly 4 or so minutes into the game. So that's basically what we've got it so far. Now, there's one more important timing that we will have to note down very shortly, which is also a timing I wasn't completely certain of myself, and that is right about this moment right here. So I don't think this is a specific, like, exactly, like, 3 minutes and 47 seconds I'm gonna add on an extra gas geyser, and I'm gonna put my drones back into gas. I think this is more of, like, a feeling-based type thing. Uh, but roughly speaking, around 4 or so minutes, you wanna be adding in the gas is back, so you want to put the drones back into the gas geyser. You also want to be starting up um, the extra gas geyser in the natural, and at that point, before the 4 minute mark, you want to make a roach warm. Now, professional gamers, okay, will not randomly put down buildings. Like, if he's not gonna use this Roach Warren until 6 minutes into the game, he's not gonna build it until, like, 5.30, right? He's not gonna do that. He's not gonna waste those extra minerals. I mean, keep in mind, this is 200 minerals in total, if you take into account the cost of the worker as well. That's a lot of money there. You may as well just be able to spend it. But I think because he just spent all of his larvae, or at least the primary amount of it, um, he is just simply gonna add it on. So... Before the 4 minute mark, he's adding on a Roach Warren, and I think that has to do with the Adapter Rass once more. So, what do we have so far? 16 Zerklings to defend early game harassment, 4 minutes, add the drones back into the Gas Geyser, put up a second Gas Geyser and add on the Roach Warren, if you want to play real safe, 3.30 once again, get the Spore Crawlers out. Now, even though he doesn't make Roaches right away, he's not gonna make Roaches right from the get-go here, he is still gonna make sure that he adds on uh, the Roach Warren at that timing, and I think that is just in case his opponent is indeed going for the Heavy Adept style. Now, here we go, um, and we do see that Oracle popping in. Imagine if he would have made that at 4 minutes. He would have been a little bit late, so 3.30 turns out to be the perfect time on that. And he's gonna start um, just simply walking around here with the Zerklings once again, checking out what's going on. This time around, he does get a couple of probe kills, and he also sees that there are indeed multiple gases going down. He's tracking for holes in the defenses. Sadly, that isn't going to be happening, and he's just simply making workers. Now, notice, while this is going on, he is exclusively making workers. I want to figure out exactly what time does he start to make units. Because, you know, this was fine in Heart of the Swarm, 
This was fine to like just make a non-stop work or non-stop workers instead because hey, there's an Oracle out, there's Phoenixes out, there's not gonna be any kind of a RAS potential, right? However, since he knows that you know Hero favored his style, when exactly does he decide to add on extra queens if he's gonna go for those? And when is he gonna add on the roaches? So instead of like when does he stop making workers? When does exactly does he stop making workers? So in this particular case, there's a little bit more of RAS going on. Uh, once again, he's just walking across the map here with a couple more of the drones. But notice, like, he is still not, he's still not playing super aggressive here. He's just playing it really, really safely. Still making a lot of workers, still making sure he gets that saturation going. But what exactly triggers him to add on those, uh, those, those roaches? So he's already uh, seen that there were phoenixes, and right now he sees multiple phoenixes go up. He knows that there are multiple phoenixes right at this point in the game. Now, there's a bit of a supply block here, so he won't be able to execute his plan right away. But very shortly, here's what he does, okay? Here's what he does. So, Overwatch is spawning, and he immediately, upon seeing those Stargate units... So, not when he saw the, the Oracle, by the way. Like, he saw the Oracle, he had Spore Colors to deal with that. But first things first, right as he saw the uh, Phoenixes, he immediately adds on three more Queens. And this is interesting, because this is something I haven't done before. I mean, at this point in time, he's got four Queens. He's got four Queens. Why would you need more, right? And I guess that is just in case there is going to be heavy harass. I mean, you got to keep in mind, let's say he's going to start pumping out double void rays or like, you know, just goes heavy, heavy phoenixes. You got to need some sort of counter for that. It's not so much to hit the queen injects, but I think it is just as like a general counter to air. Going for Hydras is a risk. Hydras get picked off very easily. Ade or like Oracles do bonus damage against light. Adepts do bonus damage against light as well. So that practically means that... Um, you know, they they are not a very good counter to this unit composition. Whereas queens, obviously, are always going to be able to be strong, plus they carry towards the late game much faster. So, first thing to notice here, after getting the early game defenses up, 4-minute Roach War and extra gases and all that, um, and the super safe play in general, as soon as he sees multiple phoenixes, more than just one, he adds on the three more queens, or like a queen in every base that he got going up. At that point in time, he also starts adding on the roaches. So even though he hasn't seen any kind of ground army, right? Well, he sees it right now. He already made those roaches in anticipation of that happening. And that is just a matter of practice. Now, one important thing to note as well is that he's actually not rallying the hatcheries. Like, he's got one of the hatcheries rallied, I guess. But he's got all of the other rally points back into the mineral line. So the roaches don't just get picked off for free. Very important to recognize here as well. So he starts making roaches. Now, exactly how many does he decide to make? He's just starting non-stop roach production. And this timing here would not have been normal at all back in the day, okay? He's making non-stop roaches after seeing multiple phoenixes, rallying those towards their mineral line, and he's just trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. There is still no lair in production, by the way. Super late on the attacking up part. He's playing hyper, hyper defensive, has no way of really pressuring his opponent, um, but he is starting to make as many roaches as possible. So a bunch of the roaches are already out at this point in time, and I wonder if he does decide to start adding on drones once again, or if he just starts to add on more and more units here instead. So, more queens going down, actually. He's going up to 10 queens right now in total. So, after seeing that heavy Stargate play, he decides to go heavy queen. Now, notice the difference right here, right? Normally, whenever I would play against this style, I have two options. I would go either Hydra and then go fast Lurker play, or I would go for a bunch of Corruptor and try and like kill a Hatcher or like a Nexus that way, right? And Corruptors are pretty great against these units as well. Instead, apparently, the safest all-round option is to, as soon as you see these units come in, you start making a lot of Queens and you start making non-stop Roaches as well. Now, notice he does have a huge economy, like, uh, he still does have three bases saturated, and at this point in time, he's got 51 workers, slight advantage to his opponent, uh, but he starts a massive amounts of units. So, as soon as Adepts would swoop in right now, he would deal with those with ease, like, there's absolutely nothing that his opponent is gonna be able to do with them. Now, sadly, he is slightly out of position here, Roaches are gonna come in, he's forced to transfuse a bunch of these units, um, and in general, though, I don't think these are gonna get too much done at all. Still more Queens of production, I wonder if he's gonna queue up more. Yep, looks like he's just queuing up three more queens once again as well, and just getting non-stop uh, units going there. Still a little bit of a with the Zerklings as well, uh, but this is important to note. Now, after the Adept Aggression shuts down, which is right now, 11 drones on the worker tap, right? After he knows he countered those units, 11 workers on the production tap immediately. Now, here he does start the counter-attack, but this is basically like, this is basically the first seven minutes that I wanted to emphasize in this particular game. Uh, which I think are really important. So once again, to recap, go for a hatchery, 
add on the gas guys the next then go for the spawning pool get 100 gas in the spawning pool or for the for the zerking speed in the spawning pool then put the drones out of the gas once again and put them back to mineral mining with those extra minerals you add on the third base with relative ease at three minutes at 30 seconds you're gonna add on the double spore crawlers in your bases or a single spore crawler in each of your bases and then before the four minute mark you make sure that you have the Roach Warren down, add on an extra Gas Geister, and go for the gases in the main as well. Now notice, there's actually only one drone in the natural. You may think this is a mistake, it's not. It's actually intentional for sure. I can't imagine this actually being a mistake right now. It just simply doesn't need all that gas. Now, while the Oracle Arras is going on, you can do a little bit of scouting, right? You can figure out, alright, how many gases are going down for my opponent? If there's none, there's a big chance my opponent is indeed going to go for some sort of Phoenix into a depth play. And at that point, you got to make sure you reset the rally point of your bases. And as soon as you see Phoenixes, you do two things. You start non-stop Queen production, and you start non-stop Roach production. And that is basically what we got from here. Like, that is basically what we got from here. Instead of, like, making, like, eight roaches or whatever to try and deal with this and making a bunch of zerklings and all that, I feel like this is a much safer all-round option that is working in every single scenario when you're up against this. Now, like I said, I'm gonna speed up the process a little bit of this game. Um, like I said, this game does actually end up not going in favor of Snoot, but look at the supply count here, right? It's not lying. It's already really far in favor of him, and it's just gonna get more and more in favor of him as well. Um, so at this point, he's going to start transitioning towards a fourth base as well. At seven minutes, he finally does start up that lair. He goes for the Evolution Chamber. Notice he also doesn't rush out the upgrades. He simply puts down the Evo Chamber right when he starts up the lair. And he's just doing a little bit of a RAS whenever he can. Still making workers, by the way. Still making sure he gets up more static defense as well, just in case. And still, you know, having a ton of queens in production as well. There's already four queens. Well, there's actually only four queens at this point out. Uh, but he's still adding on more and more of those and just making sure that he counters the Adept Phoenix style. Um, I gotta be honest, I actually really do like this approach. I mean, I can't imagine there's really gonna be a scenario where this won't work out well. I mean, in most places, I can't imagine this working out brilliantly against the style. So once again, 4-minute Roach Warren, get a couple Zerklings initially to make sure that you scout across the map and get the blind spore crawlers out to make sure that you counter the style that your opponent is going for, even if he's not going to be using, like, even if he's not going to go Stargate, those, um, those spore crawlers are still going to be hugely, hugely helpful. Now, in this particular case, he immediately did go for the Infestation Pit, and he's going for a Roach Ravager Queen type of style, where he adds on Infestors as well. Something that you may want to consider, definitely difficult to uh, to control, obviously, but definitely a very powerful style as well. Still not moving across the map. Now notice he can't actually move across the map very easily at all. Like he just simply doesn't have the resources um, and like the upgrades to do so. Very very laid back style, typical Snoot fashion, really. Like he does play aggressive in certain scenarios as well. When it, but when he does play macro, uh, this seems to be his tendency where he just you know, sits back and gets a bigger army from his opponent. Now notice, once again, supply counts are going to go heavily into his favor. I'm just going to speed up the game a little bit more. And while I transition towards a hive to get that ultimate army up, uh, still adding on more queens, there is going to be some unfortunate force fields here. And while he does max out, uh, there's some good disruptor hits. He decides to go for the counter attack, and basically that counter attack very shortly does end up costing him the game. So all in all, definitely some good lessons learned, okay? Um, I'm gonna try and start incorporating this into my own games as well. And I hope you guys actually enjoy watching these type of videos. I know I don't really upload these kind of videos very often at all. Uh, but last time around, I did like a heavy strategy type talk. Um, a lot of you did uh, mention that you really liked it. So um, if you would like to see more, please let me know down below. Because I would love to do this more and more often. Um, there is like not a very big amount of replays available. It's pretty tricky to get a lot of good replays because, well, a lot of tournaments just simply don't release them anymore. Uh, which make it rather difficult, but I can see if I can ask around and maybe get some uh, some some good replays going as well, so I can analyze some more games in the future. Either way, though, like from tournaments like the GSL and SSL and whatnot, it's practically impossible. But in general, I think we got some good progress going in this video. Once again, make sure you get a big amount of Zerklings initially, about 16 or so, while running up your third base. Four minutes, add on the extra Roach Warren, add on the extra Gas, and start making Queens as well as Lonesome Roaches as soon as you see the first sign of multiple Phoenixes. I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I'll see you in the next one. Boom!